last programme in this series of Zigzags Mapmakers and we're taking a look into the future. This week we're going to imagine that something has happened here at Kenton Mandeville. Something that will change it completely and forever. And something that will really put this small village on the map of the whole world. Kenton Mandeville is quite close to Glastonbury and it's around here that King Arthur is believed to have had his court. Now, do you remember the story of how King Arthur became king? He was the only one who could draw a mysterious sword out of an ancient stone in the churchyard. And written on the stone were the words, whoever can pull the sword out of the stone will become king of all England. Now, just imagine that that stone was found here today. It would mean that we would have our only real evidence that King Arthur ever existed. Just imagine that it happened here, in Kenton Mandeville. The discovery would hit the headlines. Here's how you might see it reported on Newsround. Hello. In Somerset, archaeologists are claiming that the site of King Arthur's Camelot may at last have been found. This follows the discovery of a sword in a stone by men working at a quarry in the village of Kenton Mandeville. Historians agree that the sword could well be genuine. If so, then life for the people of Kenton Mandeville will never be the same again. For Newsround, Sally Gray reports. If this really is the ancient sword of King Arthur, then one thing's for certain. Where we are now will surely become one of the most popular tourist attractions in Britain. And if the court of Camelot lies under these fields, then Kenton Mandeville will become the Disneyland of Britain. But with one big difference. This is the real thing. At the moment, the people of Kenton Mandeville are very excited about the discovery. But it remains to be seen whether they will welcome the change that it will bring. This is Sally Gray reporting for Newsround at Kenton Mandeville. Now remember, that's just an imaginary story, one that we've made up. But things like that really can happen. And what we're going to do now is to challenge the Kenton explorers to make a new map of the village of Kenton Mandeville, as if the sword and the stone really had been found. But first, we're going to take them along to have a look at the stone. And remember, they don't know if it's real or not. Come right in and have a look. Great. Is it a sundial? It's, it's a sword. sword. It's a sword. It's a sword in a stone. <laughs> what does it say? He pulls out this sword. Uh-huh. Is it true king of England? Is there... Whatever. Is there, I can't is read it, that. Oh, it's the king! The king! The, the, king. the monarch. Oh, monarch of England. Can yeah. anyone remember who it was? That actually yeah, king, Arthur. king Arthur. King Arthur, king Arthur, Arthur himself. Arthur. And this is it. Is it? Yeah. What? This is it. Well, we've Stop. just we just found it here in the quarry this it's morning. Cool. The guy was digging up some nice stone and uh, one minute, next minute he found this. But the Kenton explorers weren't fooled for very long. Why didn't you think it was true, Christopher? I thought it was a video. It's not real. It's all bendy. Well, actually, we had it put here especially. It's part of this week's challenge. You're going to have to make a new map of Kenton Mandeville, OK? As if the sword and the stone really had been found here. Okay, so I think we should go and sort that out yeah. and write down some of your ideas, yeah? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Back at school, we discussed what effect the discovery might have on the village. It's kind of exciting because you think, well, we've got this really amazing thing right next to our school in our village. It would be better for the sort of shopkeepers because they'll get more business. There'll be more shops built, like um, the banks down the road, they've closed down, but they might open up again. We'll get money from the people paying to see the sword in the stone. So we'll get um, money for the village. You could, like, build a community centre for the village to benefit from. You yeah. have to play games in. But the discovery might also bring some unwelcome changes to the village. It'll make the village a lot noisier because of all the um, people and the cars. If we have more people coming in, we get more pollution and that, and more rubbish. It will be very dangerous because um, children walking home from school and all the cars and lorries and things will be going past. If we have like leisure centres and swimming pools and that, it will be turned into a town or something, and we don't want that. 
There was one thing that most people did want. King Arthur's theme park. So if we could build a King Arthur's theme park near the quarry, but keep the rest of the village sort of as it is now, just make the stuff for the tourists near where the storage and the stone is so they don't go in the rest of the village and spoil it. There would be plenty of things for everyone to do in the theme park. Cinema, bumper cars. Sir Lancelot's football stadium. And here's, this is a tourist information thing. Well, you've even got the sign right, yep. King Arthur's Castle. Uh-huh. A hotel. And this is the um, Soul in the Stone, which the theme park is really kind of based around. But the bit um, up Row Lane, um, the waste bit, I've turned into a nature reserve. Raw Lane is a farm track running from the high street straight down to the quarry. If it was widened, it could take all the visitors to the new theme park. But would that be a good idea? These fields are a special part of the village and the Kenton explorers decided to protect them at all costs. And do I like the idea of um, a main road going through Row Lane because it's really one of our wildlife parts. Some animals like tapping on the weeds. And... Yes, exactly, that's exactly it. So you bring the animals here and then you could have your playground back up there. Yeah. I think we could put a hut with a bench in a garden as well. Mm. Well, that'd be nice, yeah. yeah. We could have... Or something. Yeah. Yeah. We've got some trees here. We could have a hide and we it's could add a few things like birds. a pond and some trees. And... Yeah. Things. So if we weren't going to turn the farm tracks into main roads, how else could we get the tourists into the theme park? Um, down the bottom of it. If they come in that way, then we won't have to build roads through Row Lane and places like that. Well, if you had the station, it wouldn't only mean tourists coming here. It would mean it would be easy for other people to go to other places. But the station is a long way from the theme park. How could they be connected? Philip had an idea. I've done a train station on the train line that goes over Church Street. Right, tell me about... Your, you've got a monorail here. Tell me about that. It starts at the train station and it goes all the way through to the theme park, which is at the top. Wow. You can pick people for, up from the train station or the car park or the camping site or take them back there. Well, I've got the village in the middle so that the people stay around the outside. Mm -hmm. And I've got an information desk here about the stone and the village around it. Like tourist information, yeah? yeah? And what about the purple bit all the way around here? What's in the high street? The cinema, us zoo, um, skiing centre. Wow. Temping bowling centre, restaurant, it's a hotel, um, campsite, it's fish and chips. Oh, and you put in some traffic lights. That's new as well. Yeah, because it would be like really busy and and the traffic lights. Michael sketched a great design for the monorail. I think some of your sketches are brilliant. But it would be great if we could have some professional advice, someone that could really help us with the planning of our new village. Uh, I'm sorry, who, who are you? Hello, I'm John Shaw from the District Planning Office. Well, you're the man that we need. You're the man with all the advice. You know what to do. We're basically, we're trying to, to plan out a new village of Kent and Mandeville. Good. Perhaps you'd like to tell us how we should start. Well, you've got lots of ideas. What you need to do now is to pull them into a plan so you can work that plan for the future. Right, OK, well, how do we do that? Well, the way the council does it is it sets up committees. It's best to look at ideas in, in little bits and then put them together like a jigsaw. So each committee looks at a little piece of a jigsaw, then they come together and put the jigsaw together so they get the whole picture. Right, so um, what different areas should we concentrate on them? I think you need a transport committee to work out all the transport ideas as yeah. to which are the best. We've had some good ideas there already about making perhaps a monorail throughout the village. Yes. OK, so transport. You need a leisure committee, then you need an overall committee, which is called the planning committee, to pull all those ideas together and to make a plan as to how the village is going to accommodate this idea, this new development which is going to take place in the village. How is it going to cope with it? Mm. Are there any other committees that we think might be quite helpful, useful for, for making the plan of this village? Conservation. No, the uh, conservation committee would be a very good idea. You've got lots of very old buildings in Kenton and lots of lovely countryside around it, which needs protecting. The new map of Kenton Mandeville will be traced over the Kenton Explorer's first map. The first thing to do was to outline the parts of the village where new development will be allowed. 
This area will be the theme park. The land to the west of Roe Lane will become a nature reserve. And these fields will become a picnic area. So what we could do is have the monorail coming from the station to, the, to wherever the car park will be, to campsite. You could put the car parks down the bottom of the village because there's a lot of room down there. Right. It's just fields down there. That's great. The because there's a main road going down under Kenton and then And then up to there and then up to the theme park. The monorail will link all the new areas together. Some people like walking, Chris. You can have the transport one. committee had a lot of decisions to make. And you can have a subway for going that far, and then there's a way out yeah. into the car park if you want. If you go, or a way down, down, if you mean, or way down if you into the walk. subway to the monorail station or train station. Then you can. Then they can have the nature way all the way as far up to the stone, up to the stone, so to the theme park. I don't think people will hmm. walk that far. Some people walk for miles. We were going to have King Arthur's Castle, which is just like an old castle with all like old fashioned stuff where you can go and have a look around. And it's got a moat around it. But for safety, um, that we probably need to put shields or a hedge around here, but just have a bit where, where a path needs to come in because young children, they're going to run on here and they, they're, like there's the lake. Yeah, it could be quite a dangerous place, couldn't it, the quarry? Yes. We can't destroy the quarry because it, it is an important part of the village. It's part of Mr Cox's family and life. So the Conservation Committee decided to keep part of the quarry as it is and the Leisure Committee would develop the rest. We could sort of have a Knights of the Round Table exhibition in one of the quarry fields. Yeah. And there could be a nature trail that leads up to the sort of the stone. Yeah. If we have a Knights of the Round Table exhibition, yeah. we ought to um, do it somewhere where it's not going to disturb anybody. Cricket pitch, right? Yeah. There's no pictures. Um, it's not that many. Do you do theatre? There'll be theatre. 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 Need some more hotels, there's only one. Yeah. Two. 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 Three. Three. The Leisure Committee grouped all the hotels and restaurants together on land to the west of the nature reserve. And there's the theme park to plan too. Yeah. A souvenir shop. Oh yeah, put ice, shop. Put tourist, ice cream tourist shop. information. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot that. What's that? Just put an eye. You need some gift shops as well. Yeah, yeah, we've got one. We've got a souvenir shop. Yeah. Well, what hotel should I call this? What's that? That. Mm. King mm. Arthur. Uh, I've done that one. Yeah. Sword and Stone. No, we don't. We've got the Cannon Hotel. Cannon yeah. Hotel. Sword Hotel. Sword Hotel. Yeah, Round Table Hotel. No, we've got we've got Round Table, table. table Hotel. I still think well, we like, ought to move our monorail over to the middle. Yeah, that's what yeah, it's all right. right. Yeah, because of where it is. Because otherwise um, we might have the conservation people moaning at us. We don't want the monorail going through the quarry. And you didn't see you want it. It's all right if the stations are here or here or somewhere, somewhere around the quarry. But we want to keep the quarry because that's part of the village. Yeah, we could take it around the outside. Now, what about Row Lane? Well, we've we decided that. to um, build a nature reserve yeah. alongside um, it here. Yeah. You've decided to build a nature, yeah. a nature reserve alongside it. Yeah. So how are you going to stop anybody going into there? Are you going to fence that off? Or? We're going to yes. put, the, the put barriers, like, you know, so you can only walk. Through. If we have a nature reserve, we'll probably need a car park somewhere, and we yeah. don't really want a car park down up down, down, down Row Lane. Did we put a walkway? Cause if people could walk up to the stone, they might want to walk to Hampton Hall, though. I know, because we've allowed them yeah. to walk yeah. to there, but we have to that station. But we have the path goes up there, yeah. and the path, and then they go up Row Lane. Yeah, yeah but we don't want them going up Row Lane. Lane. Do Walking. We? Yeah, Walking. Yeah, but we don't want, we don't want them. them. We want the tourists to stay in the theme park. We don't want them on Row Lane or anywhere like that. So Row Lane will be kept as is, yeah? Yeah. We don't want them going up Row Lane. 
in the apple orchards, we were going to sort of have hotels and fun fair there and sort of other le leisure activities. We've got a fun fair thing over here with bumper cars and um, roller coasters. We've got um, a fairground. Here we've got a restaurant called Merlin's Restaurant and it's going to go in the fairground. That's not good. We don't want it to be built on because yeah. they're nice orchards and there are, aren't many orchards around. You really need it somewhere far away from, from the actual village and the quarry and also the schools around here. We put them sort of not too far away, not too close. Right, that's right then. So far, all the committees have been able to agree with each other, but there was one proposal from the Leisure Committee that really caused a stir, a plan for a big development in the north of the village. The Leisure Group have decided they want to develop Humps and Hollows. Humps and Hollows is the name of some fields to the north of the High Street. From here, there are lovely views out towards Glastonbury. The Leisure Committee needed to know the best way to get the tourists from the theme park up to Humps and Hollows. Can you actually get people up there, do you think, yeah. with your monorail? Yeah. We wanted to go over High Street and stop at Humps and Hollows. No, no that is one They want to have canoeing and roller skating and all no. sorts of things on there. I don't no. want that idea. Because if we build everything with, you know, roller skating and ice skating things, all the people who like to rest won't get anywhere to yeah. rest, really. Yeah. OK. So yeah. Humps and Hollows is nice and, you know... We've got good views and all that. In the Humps and Hollows, we were having um, a canoeing place and picnic table. And, in the, and right in the centre, there was going to be a little lake-like thing with a statue of King Arthur and a fountain coming out of his mouth. So a compromise was worked out. It would be all right to have a lake there, because that would be nice if you wanted to walk around the lake or something and that people can still sail and canoe there. It's not an noisy thing to do. Humpson Hollows then becomes a quiet picnic area with the boating lake and the new map is complete. Visitors will enter the village from the south, either by train or by car. They will be able to take the monorail up to the theme park and look at the sword in the stone. The centre of the village becomes a conservation area. The new hotels will be built well away from people's homes and the apple orchards will become a nature reserve. It's a map that King Arthur himself would surely be proud of. Well, the map is finally finished and I think it's absolutely superb. It's colourful, it's imaginative and it's been so well thought out. So well done everyone, give yourselves a round of applause. If you fancy making a map of the place where you live, then we hope you have as much fun with it as we've had with all of our map makers here in Kent and Mandeville, in Blackburn and in Aberdeen. So, that's just about it. Oh, but there's one more thing. There's a small matter of a sword in a stone. Come on, give it a good go. Oh my goodness, he's really trying. What? <laughs> Oh, Jenna. Come on, oh, she's gonna fall back and get money. Jenna, I'm sorry. Wow! He is the King of England. Congratulations, sir. Woo!